Tulsi, it is striking when you see Putin propaganda and you line it up against Biden propaganda. Do you think that we're at risk of kind of moving in that direction right now? We are moving in that direction, Jesse. And, and your question there, what are they so afraid of? They're afraid of the truth. They're afraid of even a single voice coming out as challenging the power elite, questioning them, daring to hold a dissenting view. And they're afraid because their arguments are so weak that that they know they will not withstand the light of the truth. And this is why we're seeing not only still most of the mainstream media very vigorously uh, defending and pushing uh, the Biden propaganda. It's not enough. They're going to YouTubers. They're going to TikTokers. It's not enough that they also have Google and big tech basically working for them and with them to control what information we see and what information we don't see. None of this is enough because they won't stop. And it's not just the Biden administration. It's not just Democrats. It's the power elite. It's the neocons and the neolibs working together to make sure that every single voice in this country, anybody who's got a platform, is spouting their narrative that they want people to see hear their propaganda. And this is what's so dangerous about the place that we're in right now uh, as a country, uh, where this idea, this principle, this foundation of freedom of speech, freedom of expression uh, is directly under threat and under attack. And you're right, it's not so different. What's happening here is not so different from what we're seeing happening in Russia, where you've got state TV and controlled messaging across the board. This is, this is where we're at. It worked so well for them during COVID. If you questioned anything, they wanted to knock you off social media. They wanted to get you in trouble because you were seen as a danger to other people. And now they're trying the same playbook with the war in Ukraine. If you ask any questions, if you say, hey, maybe the no-fly zone is not such a great idea or express any sort of reservation about launching into a land war in Asia, yeah. that's now something we're not even allowed to debate. Do you think that really shows how weak their arguments are because if you're if you're confident in your argument, you know, hey, let's hash it out. We're Americans. Let's debate this. We get the best idea exactly. and we put it forward. Isn't that how it's supposed exactly. to be? That, that's exactly what our founders had in mind uh, for this country is the strength of this public discourse, the town square, people being able to argue and debate uh, and, and actually air their ideas and their views. And maybe finding, hey, there's strengths here, there's weaknesses here, let's come out with the best possible solution that best serves the interest of the American people and our country. They are afraid. They refuse to argue based on substance of one position versus another because of that weakness of their position. So instead of saying, okay, let's have a dialogue, let's have a debate and a discussion, uh, they instead immediately resort to name calling, smears, character assassination, silencing and censorship. That is not who we are as America and that it will undermine our democratic republic if it's allowed to continue. I agree. Well, the American people are not obstacles. All right. That's, That's right. what they think we are. We're not obstacles. Tulsi Gabbard, thank you. Thanks.